title is dramatic, okay? And I am saying that title with a sudden Cartier Justin clue and a love ring and a Tiffany bangle, okay? <laughs> like, don't take it all that seriously. But whether you are starting your journey into buying fine jewellery, whether you are looking to buy your next piece to add to your collection, or whether you're just nosy, I wanted to give some reasons as to why maybe you should look outside the obvious brands and maybe I could introduce you to something today that, I don't know, might capture your heart a little bit more. Now, especially Van Cleef and Cartier, the popularity of these brands over the last few years has been undeniable. And these are brands that, they're not new. This is not some like trendy, new, buzzy little brand that's like, oh my gosh, they did this exciting thing and oh, now we're interested in what are they doing over there. These are heritage jewellery brands that we've known for a long time and that are, you know, a huge part of luxury. But for example, just to show you like the popularity in recent years, in 2021, US Customs and Border Protection reported that screw bangles, aka replicas or fakes of the Cartier Love Bracelet, were number one in the list of jewellery seizures that year. So basically, of all the fakes that were trying to be imported into the US, the number one of those within the jewellery category was fakes of the Cartier Love Bracelet. Now, in no particular order after that, there were also Cartier Justin Clue bracelet fakes and the Van Cleef Alhambra motif collection as well being faked. And we know when it comes to fakes, the popularity of the item directly correlates to how many fakes there are of that item. So if it's number one on that list, I think that we can stand here and say that the Cartier Love Bracelet and the Van Cleef Alhambra range are incredibly popular. I've seen more Van Cleef content over the last 18 months than I think I've ever seen. And Business of Fashion released an article talking about jewellery's growth since the pandemic and Cartier and Van Cleef are reporting stellar sales that are still going up and sales of fine jewellery, uh, of luxury fine jewellery, are forecast to hit $51.3 billion, up 10% from last year. This is a industry that is growing, that we are investing more and more in. And does this maybe link to the whole quiet luxury of it all? Because the whole premise at the end of the day, aside from like the old money aesthetic and blah, 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 and all of that, is investing in timeless pieces. And fine jewellery is that category that just emulates that through and through. More than a bag, a shoes, a coat, whatever, jewellery is going to outlive you. Fine jewellery is very different from like luxury fashion in that the starting prices are a lot higher, right? You're talking precious metals, precious gems, all of that. But it's also something that you're going to wear most days, if not daily, which increases the pressure because you want something that, yes, you can wear day in, day out, that's not maybe like overly trendy in the way that you can experiment with fashion because it's not bags or shoes that you can swap out with something else. It's a commitment. It's much more of a commitment that you're getting yourself into when it comes to fine jewellery. Or at least that's how it feels. And so from that perspective, I understand why if you're going to pay a lot of money, you want to go to trusted brands. You want to go to brands that you've heard of, that you know, that you, you know, are able to look up reviews for and find people's experiences, or maybe you know somebody that has one because they're so popular and because they're so well known and because they're so trusted. Hence your Cartier, your Van Cleef, your Tiffany, your Bulgari, all of that. In a similar way to, and this is not true for everybody, but I'm just making generalizations. In a similar way to when you're buying your first luxury bag, maybe you tend to lean towards something a bit more classic, right? And once you sort of establish your collection, then you can try out the trendy things because you can swap in and swap out more. We know that the markup with these brands is exceptionally high. And again, this isn't just jewellery, this is fashion. We're well aware of this within luxury. We know that we're paying for brand recognition, for the name, but 
the playing field feels a bit different with fine jewellery because whereas with designer fashion you can maybe get different quality or exclusive materials or exclusive processes or whatever that other brands might not get or have access to when it comes to fine jewellery you can get let's say a one carat diamond engagement ring right you can have two rings that are exactly the same specification the same specification of diamond the same size the same material that's used in the band blah 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 the exact same design you can go to tiffany or you can go to your local jeweler and there is going to be a gap the size of the atlantic ocean in the price between those two but again i know the value of brand recognition i know the value of trust and you know branding and marketing and all of that i get it i'm here i'm a luxury addict i know by the way if you are new here my name is cassie and i'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict i have videos on mondays wednesdays and fridays so if you like luxury fashion then you're probably gonna love it here so head down there subscribe turn on the bell become a member of our luxury addicted family when are we going to rehab <laughs> <laughs> never also have a podcast links will be below check it out i understand that but i am saying that if you maybe want to do a little bit better value wise if you maybe want to look at something a bit more unique because again with these brand let's take arty for an example you've got the love range you've got the just include you've got the clash um you've got the trinity People know those collections in and out and there's not really anything outside of that. I think that you can find some really creative designs outside of those big hitter brands. And obviously, I get it, okay? But I think we are seeing the same stacks on social media. We are seeing a love bracelet and a Cartier Justin Clou and you know an Alhambra motif bracelet. We're seeing that a lot and I just want to widen your horizons maybe slightly. Maybe you can change things up. I don't know. Maybe maybe you will always want that Cartier love bracelet but maybe after that you might be intrigued by something else and if you've been on this channel if you're a season subscriber you know and you have heard of some of the brands that i'm going to be very very lightly touching on today these are brands that i would say are friends of the channel right shea jewelry you think i'm gonna see her? I'm, I'm not gonna mention shea jewelry i mean this is a collaboration that i did with the brand it's fantastic right it's chunky i especially love their curb range obviously because it's all chunky chains with you know parve diamonds and ceramic you know that i love my ceramic pieces you've got concept 26 who do my favorite piece from them is the puzzle ring she does the whole puzzle range um it's beautiful it's again it's timeless it's elegant but in a different way you've got susanna martins right this this these enamel again reworked in a different way you know the curves it's interesting all of these pieces are hard wearing all of these pieces are going to be a part of your life for years and years and years to come then you've got really fun brands like bouchier uh bouchier who sort of play on the toy aspect so you will see those precious metals with enamel that look like little twists i think they're called the fruit loops they've got ones that look like slinkies again if you want to have something a bit more playful that's a really great brand if you like color you like enamel have a look at melissa k again she has lots of different collections that use the mix of the two but also just does them in solid gold and diamonds mateo incredible um initial pieces where they have you know little diamond initials floating in the middle of a piece of quartz it's stunning mark henry again down the initial range but they all look like um inflatables like they all look like little balloon el uh, balloon elephants balloon <laughs> alphabets alphabets it's the alphabet cassie balloon letters ondin a brand that basically if you want your diamonds to move this is who you need to look at the way that their pieces move is like so beautiful to watch in the fluidity it's a little bit like a snake or an eel and if that doesn't creep you out it shouldn't because the diamonds are absolutely stunning altruist nyc my favorite piece from them is a pair of earrings that they do where it's a pair of studs but it's sort of like cuffs into the ear 
obsessed. These are all brands that, you know, these are small businesses. They're stocked in some places or maybe they're just stocked on their website that I think give you better value. You're going to get something that's a bit different, something that somebody will see on your hand and go, oh my gosh, that's really interesting. Where did you get that? Maybe they're a little bit more your style and they're still timeless. They're still going to be heirloom pieces that you can pass down, even if they don't have an LVMH behind them. Now, the other thing with these small businesses is the customer service aspect. Because they're smaller, they do tend to go above and beyond to make sure that your experience is an amazing one. And on top of that, if anything goes wrong, then you almost have a bit more of a direct contact. And I'm not saying that the customer service of these big brands is bad, because it's not. But, it, but there is something that does feel a bit more personal with these smaller brands. For example, this just came back all fixed from Susanna Martins because uh, I wore it to the Beyonce concert in the UK and I dropped it and stepped on it and it like uh, a little piece of the enamel like came off because I was an idiot and I got in touch with her and I was like oh my gosh this thing has happened well, well and she sorted it out for me and it just it looks perfect and I can confidently say that although I have a relationship with Susanna Martin she's wonderful she's been so amazing to me, I can 100% assure you that if you bought something from her and the same thing happened, she would give you the exact same level of service because that's just how she runs her business. Like I said, I think it gives you the opportunity to do something different with your collection and how you stack your pieces and how you wear them and stuff like that. The other thing is you also have businesses that are a bit more sort of on the commercial side if you don't want something that is so creative or you're a bit more classic or whatever you do have businesses like ring concierge that have such a huge range of designs that also tend to do a lot of sort of promotions or like black friday sales and things like that where you can get really great deals lest we forget local jewelers as well i don't know about sort of where you live and your, your access to jewelers and things like this and obviously some places are much better than others but again if you want something that's uh, more down the classic route obviously there are local jewelers that you can go to and depending on the jeweler that you have near to sometimes if you have something very specific in mind and you are very creatively inclined you can have them make something custom that is exactly what you wanted i wish i was that creative i'm just not then you have that option as well and if all else fails <coughs> you can always go to costco yeah that's where that bottom bangle is from excellent value excellent quality diamonds costco's brilliant you know you're not going to get anything crazy there but again if you want something simple timeless and good bang for your buck it's not just the hot dog and drink combo that's good value but yeah look there is absolutely nothing wrong with van cleef and cartier but I, I was sort of inspired to do this video because the van cleef holiday pendant i believe has come out and i'm and i'm seeing a lot of content surrounding this and i just you know i just wanted to talk about i've done a few videos like this in the past talking about specific smaller fine jewelry brands that are worth a bit of a toot toot and uh, i wanted to do it again because yes your big brands are popular for a reason they're great but if you want something a little bit different then i think that some of these smaller brands are the way to go i'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you've already seen it have an amazing morning afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father if you've enjoyed it tell your friends if you haven't keep your mouth shut i'll see you in my next video Mwah. bye guys